before. So instead of just like lowering the resistances during the campaign, we've made it so that there's pen um, during the campaign and this is extra chaos. So it is just a bit of a hellhole. And uh, you're probably going to have to overlevel like 10, 15 levels per zone, somewhere like that. And, and most people will not be making it through the campaign. So just incredibly deadly. And uh, then we've made it as a bit of an oasis in white maps, where if you get to white maps, it's going to be really safe. Like those mods are not in addition to the normal mods that are during the campaign. They're th those are the only mods there. So it's actually very safe in white maps. You can go all the way to 95 there. In white maps, yeah. No, okay, that's how that, that's what I was afraid of because when you said fist is extra chaos, I'm like, oh shit, everyone's just gonna die so much from that mod alone. Yep. <laughs> the gauntlets, oh, wait, it's gonna be fun. The gauntlets themselves are these yearly or are these every league you do these? This is my first time um, seeing it. Yeah, so we were doing them, I would say, um, we were doing them like once every league. And then with so many things happening, they were harder to schedule. So we started doing them uh, a little bit less. So now we've done like two, two this year. And then I think we'll probably carry on with like two per year going forward. Two a year. Okay. So yeah. Good. Because I mean, to me, the gauntlet is my hardcore fix. Like I moved over to softcore. It's easier to make sure my quality of the guides are better. And I miss off hardcore. I just like the content that I'm running with right now is better suited for soft course. So every time the gauntlet is there, I'm like, yes, like I get my hardcore fix and I go in and I just get slaughtered because I don't have enough experience these days. It's hard. Yeah, it's very it's very fun, it'll, be, it'll be interesting if we made it too hard, but we'll see. Um, Someone's asking an interesting question, which if it's going to be on the console versions as well, or if the gauntlet's only ran on the PC. On the PC. It's on the PC as of the moment. All right. Well, my... My next question about the gauntlet would be then how many people is there is do people actually make it through uber bosses on this like do you have modifiers you say the white maps are easier but then you have extra modifiers for yellow red maps as well and do the ubers have like special modifiers or how does that work when you get into the harder side of things yeah so let me see if i can just get one open with all the mods here um if i remember the well the, the big thing with the ubers this time is that they have four additional projectiles or two Maybe it was just red maps over four, but the special thing is that Aziri is in every single Uber, like an apparition. <laughs> so she will be like flame blasting while you're farting, uh, farting, uh, fighting Awakener and stuff like that. Let's see. We should have a screenshot somewhere with everything. And just all of them, Esri. So the reflection will be part of literally all of them? Yeah, all the Ubers. It's going to be great. So we yeah, don't funny. really know how that works with like Cyrus, who might be getting double flame blasted in the maze. Yeah. <laughs> no, and you only have three portals. Crazy. Yeah. No, it's it's funny for me because uh, I like I've been so busy because I'm moving to my house this this weekend, so I haven't had time to look up everything. So will you tell me like Cyrus, like Cyrus gonna be there and everything? That that's news to me. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. Holy. And here's a big image. I don't know if you are able to show images while we're doing this, but um, here are the zone modifiers. So campaign is incredibly hard. White maps are very easy. Yellow maps are incredibly hard. Yellow maps have 40 less damage, 30% increased damage on monsters, 60% haste, and two additional projectiles. And that includes Uberlab. So his arrow is going to be 60% faster and just bombard you with projectiles. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got to pull it um, up on screen for people to see here right now. And then, yeah, Uber bosses, 40% less damage. And that's uh, multiplicative with their already existing bonus. So I think the total less damage bonus was like, I can't remember the math. It's like 80 or 90% less damage. You don't do much damage and they deal a lot of damage. They're fast. They have multiple projectiles. They have higher AOE. We did actually ask for it to be higher. I did want it to be 100% increased damage and 70% AoE. And they said, with 70% AoE, to do with like, every ability they have is full screen. So you can't have that and only three portals because you need to log from every AoE ability. Oh, um, so it's just like bricked if you did that. It is just bricked, yeah. So we've been really trying to push this one to the limit. With the gauntlet, do you have to do you have to work specifically with GGG then? Like the the private custom leagues and all that don't give you enough options. They have to basically custom make it all for you. They don't give us enough options. They don't make it hard enough. 
um, they are just over in like two days or something when we do the private leagues. Gotcha. Okay. You think this one will last longer than two days? Because I'm looking at the Uber Bloss. Like, I mean, sure, we have we have one player who was bred in a test tube at Area 52. I mean, but Ben can't uh, can't handle that either very easily. Looking at the mods, holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, so um, from what we're seeing now, even Ben says that it's going to be a very late gauntlet. It's not going to be like a two-day finish. Um, we are aiming for nobody, including Ben, being able to finish. So we wanted to be like, how far can people go? Any surprises oh, yeah, for Hillwalk? So there are like people can put bounties. So anyone can put a bounty for two hundred and fifty dollars or more for anything. So you could actually do like first person to kill and submit a hill of bounty. Um, and and people have been doing a lot. And then streamers can fundraise with their community and put like loads of different bounties. And then you can do smaller ones. Okay, this would be very fun seeing what people came up with. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm I don't. Uh, the bounties are always fun. Yeah, I don't expect we're gonna get too far in this. Is this isn't? I mean, I'm looking at some of these modifiers and I'm like. <laughs> Dude, yeah, this is. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get very far at all in this. As a matter of fact, we but. we are making two build guides that are like very very easy to get through the campaign with, like a chieftain that gets very early 87 max res. Okay, all right. Well, maybe this will sure. be the first time I have to kind of follow a build guide then, because I'm not. You I'm should. not feeling too. I'm not feeling too confident looking at this. To be you quite honest, you should not feel confident. My that only is. problem with the campaign is the extra projectiles, because that's like. Yeah, good luck playing minions. <laughs> They're just gonna die. Uh, <laughs> uh, not this time. Your your big problem is gonna be the pen. Yeah, uh, it's it's just gone. Collateral splash. There goes to everything. Oh, maybe you could cheese if you had a corner with SRS because they don't aggro right. <laughs> maybe. I mean, off screening is pretty potent, and decoy yeah. totem is very strong as well on all builds. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, the benefit of like, uh, I guess totems as well. The minions and totems they take less damage from boss abilities. Uh, by default so that could be a thing but I, mean, <laughs> I can't keep up with it so but this was trans gems only right yeah so that's only for if you actually want to you know compete with ben and go for ubers and stuff like that so anyone that's like playing the gauntlet like, casually like they can use penance brand of dissipation which is a ban skill um and you're still able to to win all the raffles and, and things like that you're just not able to go for bounties and you're not able to go for the the main cash prices What's the okay. what is the top three main prizes for the gauntlet this year? So it's percentage based. So it depends how big the prize pool gets. So I think at the moment, without a lot of the sponsor money, it's over ten thousand already. We normally wow. do get somewhere around like twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Wow, that's actually uh, like and then it's just a percentage of that. Yeah, so they they do get pretty big. Okay, that's a pretty big prize pool. And then, and then some people choose to go bounty hunting as well. And we've had somebody bounty hunt and win over like five or six thousand dollars just by being the first to do things. Has there been a typically a very wide variety in the people that are winning these, or is it like pretty much every season? Because I've seen memes about like, ah, oh, Ben's going to win another one. You know, I keep hearing this this meme, but is it's is it fairly oh. spread? Or so Ben has won half of them. Um, so there, I think there's been eight so far. Ben has won four, I believe. Um, XL won one. I just maybe XL's won two. I'm not 100% sure now. Uh, Al Kaiser's won one, and Steel Mage has won one. And then that's like the overall winners. And I think, I think it's like 10 or 11 people ever have full cleared a gauntlet. 10. That's about right. Holy moly. All right, yeah, well, this is my, very, very few people. My plan is just to uh, try not to embarrass myself too bad with the, with the gauntlet, then I think is. That's kind of how I'm going to go with it. Right, you're playing it too, mean, right, Gazi? Uh, so I always use it as my hardcore fix. I love the launch of it. Uh, my lucky case is that I'm moving Saturday and Sunday. So me being behind is obviously because I'm moving. Ah, it has nothing to do with that. I'm not good enough. Yet, perfect. No, <laughs> no I, I love it. It's uh, I like that the bounty hunting is... Um, if you feel confident, you can you can set a goal for yourself. Like I, I know that I'm not even close to being as good to compete with like the top racers. I consider myself a pretty good racer. The difference is a good racer is here, and then you have the actual racers is up here. So the Very difference same. between me and the casual players is the same level of difference between me and the top racers. It's just crazy what a difference it is. So competing there is like completely irrelevant for me to even try. 
but bounties is really cool with these events because then I can set up a, a strategy and be like, hey, I want to go for that bounty and then just design a plan for how I'm going to compete for that bounty and set. And that's yeah. a way to compete without, you know, super racing, if you will. I like that approach. That's, but that's yeah, I'm moving, so I'll play on Friday and see how far I get before I go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm casting this time, so it'll be different for me. I usually do compete oh. and have full clear to Gauntlet in the past. Um, but yeah, this time me and Steel Mage are casting because it's been like very requested. So see how that goes. But I still will like, I'll, I'll finish the campaign and get like 90 or something. So how is the casting plans work then? Like I, you know, I haven't seen any of these before. So what you do, you, you, you sit on the stream, you pull up your streams like, oh, this guy's here. This guy here's so where he's going for you. Just kind of that way. Yeah, so um, on day one, it's very interesting. There's so much to talk about, like strategies of people going through the campaign, talking about like, you know, things that happen to people, whether they be deaths, which there are a lot of, like the yellow text is just literally like, oh. um, and uh, yeah, no, it's, um, it, it's very interesting. There's so much to cover on day one. And uh, then people are, like starting maps and... Honestly, like day three and four will probably be like the least fun because that will be more talking about like highlights, like crafting strategies. We'll be like showing off some POB things and talking about what the multiple players are going for. And there will be some highlights uh, as well. So we're going to be pretty flexible on how long we're streaming and stuff. I think we're doing like eight hours day one, five hours day two, and then we'll do between four and eight hours the other days, but we'll be flexible. So like when there's like something fun happening and constantly good things, We'll be doing longer, and if it's like a bit of a lull, we'll do like a shorter one. Fair. So that that's how we're approaching that. Okay. How long is the gauntlet uh, up for? Is it a week? Ten days. Ten, Ten days. days. So that'll run from the second till the twelfth, which then puts that just a uh, a week and some change away from last epoch's launch. So it'll be a nice yeah. time filler. Yeah, I'm actually going on a little mini holiday right after the gauntlet. So the thirteenth, I'm going to Florida for. Six days, and then I get back the uh, launch day of Last Epoch. Nice. Oh, I mean, you got a busy schedule then. You got the 10 days of the gauntlet. You got yourself your trip straight back into Last Epoch launch. Are you planning to cover, like, Last Epoch entirely on both YouTube and Twitch, and you're going all in type situation? Absolutely, yeah. I, uh, th through Maxwell, they reached out, and they want to do collab on the Falconeer release. So we'll be doing that on my YouTube, which I'm very excited for. When do you, oh, what's the... there, there was a leak on that recently, right? That was just the passives, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's going to be fun. I mean, uh, the, there's the Warlock and Falconer new classes. Super excited for that, personally. All right, which one are you most excited for? Falconer, for sure. And I'm just You're so not excited obligated to play more as a Max No, no. I mean, that's why I was so excited. <laughs> that's good to hear, man. Oh, man. Now, nah, Last Depot is great. It's, it's going to be very fun. Like, I've been waiting for this for a long time, but you were one of the guys that came from PUE, right? When most of us were playing Last Depot during the Alpha season, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. been playing for like five years now, six years. Yeah, it's crazy. The time just flies. I know. Cool. Actually, yeah, six years now. Because I remember so, when Judd first approached me and the game was like dog shit. And it's just yeah. come so far, <laughs> like, so far from then. That's crazy. Yeah, now I remember how horrible it felt back then. And then moved into um to where it is today and how they developed everything like i was surprised when they changed the crafting system which i already really enjoyed first and i was like why did you change it and i really enjoy the new yeah. changes they made yeah i actually really initial i, I like the initial system they had too with um the items could like brick yeah i, I quite like that but yeah the, the new system is fine too it is good no for sure for sure you can play hardcore on the launch because any said you started basically hardcore in poe2 you're doing the same thing in last epoch yeah yeah i always play hardcore in last epoch okay yeah, nice. i'm kind of debating doing it too but I, I i you know i haven't played it really so i'm kind of thinking going in blind on hardcore might be a little it's bit fine. of a you think that'd be the funnest time to do it when you really don't know what you're doing so it's as i mean i i don't think i i've never played last epoch on softcore i think um did I? I can't remember, but yeah, it's it's very fun to play on hardcore. The only thing you need to keep pretty are they void resist. I think that's the thing that gets you the most. Yeah, especially the clerics, right, in the campaign. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. the void clerics, that's what gets you. Ugh. That's like I, I die. If I die, it's the void clerics. And they do yeah. void damage. 
Uh, other than that, things. honestly, very, very straightforward. Like, probably just have your chat tell you, like, hey, for this act, you need cold rest. This act, you, like, the last one, you need, like, poison. But yeah, um, that, that's all you need, really. Well, I like the trading system cool. that they're adding into last epoch. And it with the auction house style of it, you got sort of the solo cell phone faction. You have the, you have the marketing, you know, trading sort of the faction. But it seems like... Path of Exile 2, from what I'm hearing, is added an auction house as well. Is this correct? Because I know you just had an interview. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. So I got to watch okay. it. But I've been hearing that they have added more information related to the trading of Path of Exile 2. I was wondering if you could break that down a yeah. little bit. So obviously, I did the uh, the interview with Jonathan and Hrishi yesterday. And... Uh, Something I thought was really admirable and really cool, which I don't feel like you see a lot, was they've been very sticking to their guns, but now they've been like, you know what? Like, maybe we are wrong. Maybe this is something we need to revisit uh, because this is clearly something players want. So we we are, uh, and, and they like basically said they were inspired by Last Epoch and said like, this is something we're going to revisit huh. and actually think about doing, which I think is pretty rare, just as like humans in general don't do that a lot. Um... So yeah, very impressive, and uh, yeah, they're they're looking into a fully fledged trading system in PoE two. Now, obviously, PoE one is a lot harder to do something like that in because there's there's nothing that's taxable, and that's the big difference in PoE two. They have gold that is taxable, and they're not going to make it tradable, and that'll make it really hard for flipping too, right? In PoE two, Good you point. will not be able to just sit in your hideout and flip and sell items because you will actually run out of gold, and you will need to go actively play the game. Whereas in a lot of games have a big problem with this where you can literally just live in your hideout and do nothing else. And, and that's not going to be possible. Obviously, you could bot that and they'll have to have like some preventative measures there. Um, but but that already like making things more difficult for people that want to do stuff like that is already a good thing, in my opinion. It's one of the things. Sure. No, I was super, super uh, surprised that they turned or 180 on that one. Because I remember when they had uh, damage control se session was it two three years ago um and they went out and all of uh, the streamers all of us that took with you as well we, like we took questions to the community and all of us were spammed guys you gotta ask chris wilson about trade we want auction house and we're like we they've already made it very clear it's never gonna happen it's never gonna happen and eventually we were like we spoke to chris like yo we gotta ask because we're gonna be mad if we don't ask and he, he, the only response he said yeah we're just gonna say no I'm like yeah, we'll make a funny sketch out of it or something. Like so the, then during the show, everybody just asked that. Yeah, the community wants us to ask this, and they were like, "No, it's not gonna happen." And now just one eighty out of the blue, out of the blue, just like that. <laughs> That's so crazy. Dude, my jaw yeah. is on the floor. It's crazy. Oh, I'm I'm very very surprised. I'm actually not a huge fan of auction house in games because of the flipping problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So hopefully, Pee Two ends up being just a really enjoyable experience with that gold limiting factor. Uh, I've also grown to sort of, it's interesting because I used to hate binding, but I'm actually a very big fan of bind on trade. That's actually something I started liking because of Tarkov. The yep. the last oh. epoch is sort of doing that too, right? You buy it off the, the market, it gets locked on your account, you can't reflip it, which... yeah. So it's like an item sync too, in sort of a way. Really yeah, right. exactly. That's why I like it. Um, I, I'm a big fan of item syncs. And something I didn't realize, because I was, I was so against, I remember listening to, um, um, I'm blanking on a name right now. You're all good. Um, give me one second. Take this moment to have, it is Tavern Talk. David and I Brevik, got some there it goes. There it is. I was listening to David Brevik talk about Soulbound and why it was so important. And I was just like, I'm such a big fan of so much of the stuff he does, but this is so dumb. But I've realized he's actually completely correct. And the reason Soulbound is so strong, I've realized as a molder, is that there's a very big difference in power of what you can and cannot do if you have Soulbound or not. Um, and I think we saw that a lot with Sanctified Relics, right? Sanctified Relics, you actually had a reasonable chance of finding and getting a really good one yourself. So that's why I became a big fan of like a, a little bit of Soulbound. I actually think games should have very little of it, but now I, at least I'm not like just blindly uh, against it in, in every way. So that's something that's changed for me. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Like this, the whole uh, item sync that I am a big fan of when it comes to the locking the items. 
I mean, there's always gold things in MMO games, whatnot, you know, repair costs and stuff like that, and flight costs and those things, like small things, but it just gets hit by inflation so hard. And yeah. someone like myself that works a lot with profit crafting, the tiny bit of flipping on top of that to make more currency every really, you know, if those items were uh, soul bound, then profit crafting would be way more effective for me because it's very, very noticeable when the supply and demand comes to the position of a time of a league where the people who had low budget items suddenly wants to upgrade their items. It's not like their yeah. low budget items disappear. They are re-entering the market on a second hand basis. And suddenly the entire market just implodes itself. You have to craft bigger things to keep up with the demand. Yeah. And, and one thing, I don't know how you feel about this, but I saw a lot of sort of like backlash when Jonathan was talking about uh, how PoE goes like this instead of like where the cheapest items are worth nothing. Um, and I feel like even on softcore, I think he's right. Like, I feel like uh, that that is very true. Like there are middle ground items in PoE even on software. It's not like it's just the pure end game, right? Because then it would only be mirror where I then were that, sorry then it would only be mirror-worthy items that are worth something. Whereas I feel like, yeah, there there are middle ground items, like obviously, especially on hardcore. But from what I understand, even on softcore, if you get like a really good item that's nowhere near best in slot, that's still going to sell for a decent amount. Whereas oh, yeah. that is a big danger of an auction house, right? Where you will literally yeah. just have the best in slot. I've noticed that a lot on like Torchlight Infinite. There it's either it's worth like loads or nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Definitely current, a game. Um, the current set of PV1 is is very... The, the problem I see with this topic is that a lot of people are very opinionated uh, about this. Are very They're very passionate about talking about it, but they lack a lot of experience with it. Yeah. So, uh, same thing with like, especially when it comes to wealth acquisition in PV1 on the softcore trading environment. So, a lot of people think that profit crafters, we make a stupid amount of money crafting 100, 200, 300 divine items. I mean, I, I use a prime example. Back in Ritual League, I sold over 400 plus two ones. That cost me yeah. six, seven divines to craft. And my profit in total, I think it was just over 3,000 divines in profit during the course of the league. Damn. Out of 400 ones, they were selling for a little bit more than twice in the start three times that amount. And I mean, wow. we're talking, me. that's the middle section of a middle range uh, budget of items where a big yeah. upgrade is like 15, 20 divs. That's where, where most of my money was made or currency in this case was made for during Ritual League. So yeah, the, the exactly. inception people, our perception of it is completely wrong. It's like you make it from the small cheap shit that a lot of people buy. Exactly, yeah. So that's what I found fascinating. Because I do think like the economy like that way is in pretty much that curve that he was discussing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of yeah, well, sure. part of what I'm looking forward to in both the last Epoch and PoE2 launches is, you know, fresh server, fresh economy. Every time you get the fresh economy, it's it's... I don't know, it's kind of exciting. It's hype at the start of it every time. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, that's like the beauty of PoE to me. And it's like, there's so many benefits of it, right? Like a big benefit, in my opinion, is that like, if you like really mess up, if you do something like really wrong, uh, even if you like get scammed of an item, like it's really not that important when you're a league player because it's a, there's a full reset every time. And even like a friend of mine who was a standard player, he actually had his account hacked. And he lost all his standard stuff and he was like okay i'm i play the the leagues now because then they, that didn't really matter so there's mm -hmm. there's a lot of benefits two fa coming soon thank i know <laughs> i'm so happy but like yeah at least it feels like they committed a little bit more to that but that's something I like i really want especially after what happened to john yeah no for sure i'm curious like in the start of the race scene in pue we were all like that's even when i was racing Back when we all played trade hardcore party, curse bot, yeah. R bot, acrobatic face acro, EK. No, you, know, you remember the 5k HP builds, you know, out of range of the R bot, you're dead. So let's stick together. <laughs> but, um, you know, that later that transition into the Soul Cell Fund uh, from a variety of reasons. So that's been quite a long time. So moving into last epoch, are you planning on playing the trade part or are you playing the the uh, uh, fortune uh, faction and the other question would be are you looking to play an actual strict solo or are you going party like what's your what's your uh, approach to this so solo cell fun for me is normally a way to like extend my enjoyment of a game when it's starting to get a little bit stale and i want to like yeah just like kind of like artificially increase how much i'm enjoying it right in a mm -hmm. way because i maybe like still want to play it but trade league becomes too easy at some point 
this is a little bit different in Last Epoch because Trade League kind of looks garbage to me. Um, from everything they're talking about, the fact that you can still trade with the Resonance, in my opinion, the, the SSF mode, I, I get that you can play with others and it's okay that you can like share things with others as you're playing with them. But the fact that it still has like trading and like I can trade with you, like if me and Gazzy play together yeah. and, and you and Darth play together, they like, I can actually trade with Darth even though we don't play together. So because of that and like Carve sent a big example like that, that was kind of complicated. I think just the fact that this the solo self mode has too powerful trading, it seems like it kind of like, well, why wouldn't I pick that? Yeah, um, I was trying to figure out that too because I didn't quite understand the way it was getting explained because it seemed to me like, okay, it's not really solo self found. Like it's like this other faction, almost like Horde Alliance and the items have to like stay within this faction. So I, was, I didn't quite get the way it was explained there. And then the resonance yeah. thing you bring up is interesting because resonance I was trying to understand, but it seems to me like it very quickly would become not as useful because if it drops for me, but the other person can't use it because I'm either way advanced or it drops for them, but it's useless for me because I'm way advanced. And resonance only seems to work if you guys are playing the same amount, but on different time zones, basically. I'm not like, 100 percent sure about that part, but you should be able to like resonate with other players by like playing with them after the fact if you want to trade with them. Yeah, that that is the the part that I, I agree with. I actually think that the the system is really good in the sense of that it, it, the idea behind it is that you can play with a friend and have your little group of friends playing, and you guys want to have solo self, but you just want to have a little group play found, uh, but not trade with others. Then that would be great. Uh, but you have to play according to what they said and they, uh, quite a lot to drop one of these resonances. So it's, it requires quite a lot of time invested to drop one of those. And that will only be allowed, allowing you to trade with that specific person. Uh, but yes, like, like you said, says, I mean, you can find an item. Oh, this is great for that person. I'm just going to now invite that person, play with that person until I drop a resonance. But I mean, if they make it super rare, then I guess it's different. But that's hard to balance. But um, yeah. I like the idea because it doesn't alienate the people that wants to play in a group found environment. Um, but it's not like it's going to allow that player to sell it uh, on the trade, right? I think I think my bottom line for it is I haven't played with it at all so far. Like I have no idea how it's actually going to work. And I think it's a very interesting starting point because. This is such a new system that we've never really seen before. And it's really yeah. not something that they need to get perfect instantaneously, right? This yeah. is something we can be part of to help shape as a community and help them improve. So, so what if like SSF is too OP at the start or if trade is too OP at the start, maybe they'll swap it between cycles. But, uh, but either way, I think it's a very like ambitious system that I'm, I'm very excited to see that like, I think it's, yeah, changing a lot of things in the RPG world already, regardless. So I'm uh, I'm very excited for it. Me too. I mean, my understanding is that we're going to start not in a league. We're going to start in the standard league, eternal realm, whatever you want to call it, right? Which means that trade league should be absolutely insane. Because first thing that's going to happen is people level up their trade faction. And now the sickest items in the world that people have been playing for quite some time is going to enter the market. So I think it's definitely going to have that kind of impact assuming that that's how they're going to approach it unless they have a uh, starting with a league fresh, so i'm not sure what they've said not, with that are they I not doing they're a starting fresh with wipe? A cycle. i think they're starting there's i'm like i'm going to double check just because no, you, you said can that. start cycles you can start cycles oh right but it, you I can choose to play well. the permanent as well that's my understanding at least i don't think i don't think very many if anyone would not go cycle that's fair that's fair i mean it kind of depends are they not doing the, okay, so like on the non-cycle, are they not doing like a fresh non-cycle Eternal, which is like, here's the pre-launch realm, what have you, the legacy one, someone's calling it chat. And then there's like standard fresh and then cycle fresh, or is it the carrying everything pre-launch into the standard also? Because that would have surprised me. I didn't hear about yeah, that. Yeah, that would be kind of insane to me if they don't wipe but, yeah. from pre-launch. But... I was thinking surely yeah. there has to be a wipe of some kind incoming and not like it's gonna matter for me i'm gonna play cycle either way yeah i mean i think most of us will will play it's just that that's the option people have to play but um we'll see uh, either way like i'm very excited for it like i said i mean it's a it's a baseline approach to it i'm for the very first time more interested in playing this 
self-found or group-found approach than I am in trading. And I, I'm very excited for that because I haven't felt incentivized enough in other games to do so. But I am in those games. And I think that has more to do with the fact that if I have a build that has a build enabling item, or even though we even further than that, have big upgrades I can get, those are directly target-ish farmable. Some of them are directly target farmable from boss loots and whatnot. Another or you know, you gotta farm this node that gives you higher probability of dropping it. I love that approach with that last deep bug. Like I feel like I'm actually running this type of environment, this content to get what I'm looking for to upgrade my character. And I don't feel like I have enough say in how I approach that in PUE other than you know chance orb some spider silk robes and run breach to get my PSRS up. You know, it's like yeah, you know, some builds it's, work. Yeah. It's very target farmy, which I think is super important to me in ARPGs. And another thing that they do really well is um that I can find exciting things for other characters. I think that's something Diablo 4 failed miserably at, which is such an important feature to me in the RPGs. But whenever I'm playing Diablo 4, I honestly, I barely remember dropping, like as a barb, I barely remember dropping any Sork items and definitely not a good one. Uh, and, and I think for me, that's like very sad because I love that to be the reason for why I try a new character. Like, oh my God, this axe is insane. I don't usually play Barbarian, but... Not gonna have to, right? Um, it's a good point, actually, because that happened to me quite often in Path of Exile when I started playing the solo self found, particularly a hardcore point. I, I would get a gem, I would get an item yeah. that's a five link, a six link, whatever, and I'd be like, okay, well, I'm gonna make a new character to try this gem out. And that's actually how I ran into my favorite character I've ever played, which was the Cleave of Rage. I, I know it didn't seem particularly good, to be quite honest with you, but it was very, it was my favorite character I've played so far just because. That's I happen awesome. to get the gym. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. I did just clarify with 11 hour games as well. Uh, they said current characters will be moved to a legacy environment, still accessible, uh, but we will prompt and promote people to start with a new cycle character, which is a completely fresh economy. So yeah. standard is just going to be like a ghost testing realm for most people. It's yeah, so basically yeah. exactly what I said. Then, like you have the option yeah. to, but most people, like we all agreed to, will we'll play the cycle side of the way. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. and then I mean, the. The oh. fresh cycle moves back to that legacy realm. There's not like a non-legacy right. standard. It all goes to legacy. Okay. Yeah. I remember in PUE where people call softcore for scrubcore. It was like this super huge hostility between softcore and hardcore players many, many, many years ago. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I always yeah. hated that. It was pretty bad. I'm kind of becoming it a little bit of a hardcore goes. convert, though, to be fair. Like, it's it's... It, what I'm realizing is it's it's the streamer side of things, which it just makes it way more entertaining. I don't know if I was non-streaming and I had a nine to five and I come home stressed and then I play if I'd be playing hardcore. But the fact that it's streaming all the time is like starting almost every game, which is like you have one life, makes it so much more entertaining for myself as well. Even even while streaming, yeah. I think I'm going to do the same thing going in the last epoch, and uh, I'm I'm trying to get the shaper down in Poe before last epoch comes around because I'm I'm almost I'm almost I think I got like two or three of the fragments now towards shaper I gotta get I gotta get one more than I can actually tackle it but the I don't know the hardcore challenge side of it is makes uh it's been making it's a lot more so fun. I actually accidentally started playing hardcore when I was like seven or eight uh, and it was in <laughs> Diablo one and Diablo one did not have a hardcore mode. But I was playing on the uh, online multiplayer battle net thing, and my PC and my internet was so unstable. And the way it would work in that is if you died, all your gear would drop off on the ground. But if I was playing online, and there was nobody else playing with me, I was just playing on the online servers. If I disconnected and um, like my PC crashed and my internet went down while all my gear was on the floor, I now went back to like, yeah, sure, I had my level 40, 50 character. But I had no gear anymore. So I was like, <laughs> oh, no, not again. So it was like a big consequence from dying. You know, D1 uh, just launched on the Battle.net. Uh, you can now download and buy D1 again on Battle.net. And I have never played it, so I just installed it last night. It yep. is honestly very fun. I would get, I've heard there's some mods to help with clicking and things like that. Because the last time I played, my hand started hurting. Like, no other game has made it hurt. Because every single action in that game you have to click for, and it really sucks. I uh, played Diablo 1 in uh, Swedish on the PlayStation 1. Nice. Local co op with my little sister, mind you. That's how I started the Diablo franchise. I didn't realize they had local co op for, for D1. 
and that was on the uh, on, the, on the PlayStation. Yeah, we we have to be on the same screen. That was very fun <laughs> when she played a fighter and I was a sork. I wanted to keep distance. <laughs> Or when um, we, uh, at, you know, very young age, wanted to go to two different directions because the screen would wow. just stay stationary and we try to walk in one direction each. I remember those moments, but uh, wow. that's how I started. <laughs> that's funny. I didn't have a PlayStation, so I didn't know that. Yeah, me neither. I, that's kind of a, that feels kind of ahead of its time, though. Like PlayStation One, local co-op, RPG, Diablo. That feels feels pretty good for back then. But yeah. Absolutely. It was a great game. Then Diablo 2 came around and uh, took us all by storm. And... 100%. I remember like calling my parents into the room because I could see the arrows sticking out of things. And I was like, oh, look, you can see the arrows I'm shooting. <laughs> I remember kissing my ex-girlfriend at the time, or girlfriend at the time, uh, good night, turning around at a level 97 or 98 necromancer, and I was dead. Doing Mephisto runs. I didn't have my minions out. I was these pygmy fuckers. And that's, yeah. that's the last character I made in Hardcore. In Diablo 2, actually. I Same never played thing. Hardcore after that. Same thing happened to me. Um, I was um, kind of like, not casually, but I would like take long breaks from the game, come back, and I had like a level 98 sort. And I was finally going to make my push to 99 because a friend of mine told me about like uh, a big patch in Diablo 2 that buffed the mercenary. Specifically, the Act 2 Mercenary, uh, which I hadn't been using Mercenaries because they were useless up until that patch. It was like, okay, now it's so good, you need to come back and you need to try it. So I was like, okay, I geared up my Mercenary, I did Mephisto run, and on my way to Mephisto, my Mercenary insta-popped a group of dolls, and I insta-died on my level 98, and I just sat there crying. Oh. I was literally fucking sobbing, and my mom came into my room, and she's like, oh, you should just load the game. And I was like, I can't load, mom! I was devastated. I like, yeah, I, I don't think I ever hit a 99 back in like OG Diablo. No, I, I never hit it either. That was my necro. I was going to do it with. And uh, yeah, I feel you. I, I cried for a long time about that. I grieved that shit. <laughs> it took me a long time to get over it as well. I didn't touch the game at all for ages. And when I finally did, I went soft core and I never pushed it 99. It just, uh, yeah, no, it wasn't the same thing again. <laughs> I played it for oh, the first man. time ever last year because I had never played D2. And uh, I got to Diablo and I was doing a hardcore, you know, on, uh, I forget what, I forget what I was playing, maybe Necromancer or something. Anyway, beat yeah. beat the dude, beat Diablo, but he dies inside a wall and it bugs. <laughs> oh, no. And people are saying like, this is like a super rare bug, I guess that happens so he dies, dies inside the wall, so I have to do it again. So I reload it to go back to him and I get insta-caged and one shot by the, the lightning shot. And then it's like, all right, doesn't count. Didn't get, didn't get it to beat the campaign because he died in the wall and it didn't count. So I was like, all right, forget uh, it. And I gave up and didn't remake it. <laughs> Still have to go oh, back man. and play it. That's, That's cool. unfortunate. That's brutal. That is gaming, though. That's why we love it, right? I'm lucky. Yeah. I mean, those are the things we'll remember like, exactly. for a very long time. You know? First time you find Virat's leg in D1 it's like, or Virat's. On the side, or when you find his leg in D2, like, oh, I know this leg. I know who yeah. this belonged to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. No, I mean, I've, I've been like, it's, uh, hope, hopefully next season of Diablo 4 will be really good, but I was pretty disappointed with the, the current season. So I played it like 10 hours, and then I was like, that. Um, yeah, I hit about 10. The, the big problem for me was that it was worse than the last season, and I actually had a blast, and I think it would have been okay. Uh, if this season was last season and then it, like, it was just the opposite because then I still would have felt like, oh, okay, well, it's better than launch. But it's just that the way it went opposite way for me that it's worse than last season. That feels so much worse. I'd rather have like, okay, well, it's a little bit better now, but at least they're moving in the right direction. Mm. So I don't know. I just, it, that feels terrible. I, just... I know. I, like the, I play Necromancers only since I, I do have a responsibility when it comes to the bill guides. So I yeah. focus on that. And I just, I've only played enough to make sure that I can guarantee the quality of my guides. And I'm, I'm done now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. The, uh, the Necromancers got basically close to zero changes. The, only, the biggest change to them was the removal of Abattoir of Seer, which then made it so that instead of Infinimus being the top build for pushing, you're back to Bone Spear, which we played Season 0, which we played Season 1. Like, it's just the same thing again. I'm, I'm, I'm done. There's no point yeah. anymore. Blood's good, though, but that, that's, you know. 
And I just get bored every time I play like last an hour and then I'm like, let's play Pal World or Enshrouded or Last yeah. Deep or BOE or Tetris, you know? I just have a hard time want wanting to run the vault like over and over again. It's like kind of what I didn't like originally was like Nightmare Dungeons. Like I just don't like Nightmare Dungeons. I never have. And the vaults feel mm -hmm. like, to me like Nightmare Dungeons, but more annoying, but with more loot. Well, the loot, more yeah. loot would be great if I liked the loot. But it's yeah. like items are yeah. kind of a problem. So it's like 50 more of the same goddamn legendary that I kind of don't care about. It doesn't really matter to me. So I just yeah. don't want to play it. So I've logged out. Yeah. No, I mean, it's there's a lot of problems, right? The thing that it's it's a static environment all the time, I think, was kind of crazy. And it's also like a lot of people's least favorite part of Path of Exile. And they decided to make that the entire league mechanic. That's... I don't know, a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully they'll learn from it because I do want Diablo 4 to be a game that I regularly visit and enjoy. So yeah. I'm more disappointed than anything. Yeah, it's kind of how this, it's it's the constant, like, I really, really want to enjoy this game a lot is how I feel. It's like, I want to log in and have a great time, stream it, make content on it, you know, but it's like every, you, you get hit with a disappointment every time you kind of stop yeah. wanting to come back. It's, it, you know, even stuff like the horse promo, it's like horse promo is awesome. Thanks for doing the horse promo, guys. But then it's a plain, it's like the plainest promo at all yeah. time. So like the only way I can even mention that we're having it is like buy a basically completely worthless plain brown horse if you want to, I guess. Because it's, yeah you know, it, so I, I don't know. Sometimes it's like, man, if we could just put a little bit more effort into it. Supposedly the pet's good at the end game now. They buffed it or whatever and he's yeah, like 1v1ing yeah. one Durio and 1v1ing one Uber Lilith and all that. But all these clips I see, it's always the Barbarian. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. The the horse thing was very disappointing to me because I actually took a lot of inspiration from the way you run the campaign last time uh, with recording like funny horse commercials. I was like, oh my god, that is such a good idea. I'm going to do that. I'm going to steal that idea. Uh, and I had my friend ready to go with her horse and then I was like, Never mind. <laughs> like, I'm not advertising that. Um, but, uh, and also, something I was very surprised at, and I, I don't understand how this is illegal, but, like, such a big selling point of the horse um, last time was that it was 30% bigger or something yeah. than every other horse. It was bigger. And they just, they just shrunk that horse that they've already sold. So after selling, like, hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of a cosmetic, they've reduced the size to completely the same size as any other horse. Which so many people haven't even noticed, and I just I thought it was crazy. No, I know when when we were looking at, it, I was like, let me see if the because this is the first thing I looked at is the new plain brown horse bigger? Like, is it a Giga Chat horse? I'm like, no, it's the same size. But then as I'm scrolling mm. through, I click on the Primo, and I'm like, wait a minute, it's the same size as the wait, hold on. And then I realized the Primo got shrunk, and it's I mean that's how I sold it was like it's the Giga Chat horse, it's bigger than the others. Some people were saying it's a bug. And it was a bug fix. It's like, I, if that was a bug, you got to not fix it. Like, I mean, that's the type yeah. of thing where you ignore that because it's not like it was actually faster. You know, people buy it under the guise that it's it's bigger. That Yeah, that one kind of bummed me out too. I'll admit to that. Yeah. Even, even if it was a bug, I do think in a lot of EU countries, uh, it's illegal to do that because um, I know, I can't remember if it was War Thunder or World of Tanks. But they changed a cosmetic after selling it, and they lost the the lawsuit there. So one of one of those games uh, got in trouble over that already. That's hmm. more than I knew, but that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, it's it's weird to change something after selling it. It's okay if you do it in the first few days and go like, "Hey guys, that was a mistake." But to do it like the start of the next season after you finished all sales, it's like, bro, the fuck. No. Yeah. I don't know if it's the type of thing where it's like, well, the horse is free with two purchases of a Twitch sub, you know, and then that's the way it's like, but, you know, you're not really buying the horse. Yeah, I guess that. I don't know. I could definitely I like... see that argument, but I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I like, like the it. Twitch drops and the gift subs for a cosmetic. I think they're, those type of marketing stuff is really fun for us streamers, for sure, but it's like, I mean, yeah, money is great. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I lasted less than an hour after the gift to sub started. I was like, I, I, I can't sit here and pretend I'm having fun. So I was like, I, I, I tried my best not to bitch and moan. I, I had this 
I, I guess you know revert back to how people perceive me in the interview we did with the with Jonathan. I had a punchable face and I was super passive aggressive on the screen. I was like, "Fuck this man! This is so bad. Get me out of here!" Uh, and when I realized what I was doing, I was like, "You know what? We're just gonna play Pal World." And I had the greatest time. Rainbows and unicorns. It was so just like fun. D3. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh man, so that was fun. But ah uh, no, dude. Yeah, uh, it's just... that. You jumping on the power world hypes is what are you thinking here? I don't know if I have time. Like I don't yeah. know when I'll get to play it, and I don't True. know if I'll do it as an on stream thing. But it's like I feel like I'm going Gauntlet, Florida, Last Epoch, New PoE launch. So I'm like, because yeah. it's probably going to be like somewhere like March, most likely. I just I have no idea when I'm actually going to be able to. Um, to play Pal World, and I also want to play in Shrouded with Steel Mage, so that game's fun. Between those, it's uh, it's gonna be hard to to do everything, I think. But I definitely do want to play it at one point. I just don't know if it'll be something that I stream. Pal yeah. World is um pretty. Um, it's very entertaining. Entertaining. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem to be as entertaining as it is from my perspective. It's also no. kind of the the longevity is very limited compared to Enshrouded. I just got started with Enshrouded and it's already telling me that uh, this is going to take me multiple more hours than Battle World for sure, especially the crap. Yeah. But it's very fun. Very, very fun. It, and also, I think Enshrouded is more like hardcore a feeling to the difficulty and more combat-based, yeah. which I'm very much enjoying. 100%. I agree with that. Enshrouded feels more like Zelda to me than a survival game, which I'm like pretty yeah. good with because I like adventure games more than I like building and crafting. So in Shroud, it was pretty fun. Yeah. I I did try like the, the early access stuff of Unshrouded with Steel and we had a blast. Mm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So POE won next week, you said it's March, yeah? We don't have any news Most on that, likely, right? Like we don't have any like confirmation. That's just like what I would predict based on like how things are going and stuff like that. I really just hope that they're going to be back on three month cycles because it's been. Man, I just bought a house. Money is nice. I'd like three months <laughs> league. I don't want four months leagues. They're, 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 they're rough. <laughs> I, mean, I, feel that. I, feel that. There. I do still like four month leagues just because I do get to play more Tarkov and more variety stuff. But yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's fair. Yeah, right, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But they have been talking about wanting to be back on the three month yeah. cycles and uh, with. Uh, Games like Torchlight, Last Epoch, Diablo 4. I mean, it would be nice to have a month's time of Last Epoch, a month's time, maybe one and a half of uh, PUE, then 10 hours of D4 into more PUE into the next Last Epoch launch. Like, it would be really nice. What do you guys 100%. think the odds are that Last Epoch is not as big of a release as we're all anticipating? Zero. You think it's it's a hundred percent be massive? Be I mean, massive. I have a bet with a friend of mine. He thinks it's going to be number one on Twitch at some point during the two or three days of launch. I don't think that's going to happen, even with like Asmin and stuff, which is most likely going to play it. Um, so I, I think it'll be like top three, top five. I think that's reasonable. Um, but there is always like a big chance that a new game being released has hype, like suddenly like Soda and everyone starts playing it, and then boom, there you are. Um, mm. But yeah. Yeah, number one I would be insane. That... That's that's like what two hundred k, three hundred k viewers, depending upon whether this is popping off at the time. Yep, roughly yeah. that. It is one. I think that um, the uh, the way the devs are, and specifically like the way Judd is um, mm -hmm. managing this entire ship, uh, is putting them at a very high uh, probability uh, yeah. of being or being able to reach that point, uh, which makes oh, it very absolutely. exciting for me. So it's, uh, it's going to be a cool journey to not just witness, but be part of, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I just, what I've been hoping is I hope they get the opportunity that Wilson did uh, and that they just don't have everything go wrong. So <laughs> I, I don't know what it takes to like prepare for the servers and prepare for launch. So I just, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm praying, praying to Chris yeah. Wilson that uh, everything goes well. Yeah, well, hopefully Wilson there's... Was, uh, interesting. Hopefully there's not like a million server issues or anything. And it just, it launches smooth, but you know, new game launch and always going to be issues. And some of it will yeah. be inflated if they do Twitch drops and stuff too, I'm sure. So there will probably exactly. be incentives to push it. Personally, personally, I'm very easy to forgive server issues on the launch. Because oh, yeah. 
I mean, I am assuming that there's a reason why almost every company, even like big AAA companies, uh, have these issues at launch. So that I'm actually like not too critical of. Like, obviously they suck, but as long as I'm like, as long as it's not like three to five days of no gameplay, then you know, whatever. <laughs> I can get over server issues. But something that sucks a lot more for me is like really game breaking bugs like Wilson had at launch. That is like, I, I needed to start the campaign over twice. Things like that, I'm like very, very not okay with. What was the game? There's this game I bought like the $150 Founder Pack for, and I never even got to play it because its servers were down for the first like three days of the launch. Ah, oh, God, what was it? It was the... no, it was. It started with like a W or so. a Wayfinder. Oh. Wayfinder, remember I've Wayfinder? That yeah, that one couldn't even log in for like the first three what happened i'm gonna tell you the worst server issue i've ever i've never flamed the game as hard as i flamed this game so i was in uh i was in the queue and it's like a four hour queue okay and i'm playing a different game i'm playing bro force while we're just waiting okay and then it it goes to like it's about to be my turn so i'm like all right it's my turn let's get ready so i unplug my controller and get ready to get ready and unplugging the controller made it kick me out of the queue just because I had a controller plugged in and it's like you have unplugged a controller you've been disconnected it's like why is that even a thing like why does it have so, anything to do with it uh -huh. I can actually tell you why that's the thing uh and Please. it's because console is garbage and I hate controllers and console players should be punished for all the bad things they bring into the world so you got your just desserts consoles come that's what I get, I guess. So this is what I get for owning a controller. I, mean. <laughs> I play Dark Souls with mouse and keyboard, all right? Yeah, Sam, I don't, the only time I touch the controller is if I'm playing like a side-scrolling action shooter game that, you know, it requires basically a stick from the arcade. But other than that, no, it's it's mouse and keyboard everything. I don't need no aim assist all the way to miss my I headshots. I remember playing um, Guitar Hero with a keyboard as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like a simulator you can have in your computer. <laughs> just rip up the keyboard you hold like this by spamming the keys. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, I just, I, I didn't grow up with like uh, controllers. I never really got used to it. Oh, it's just preferred mouse and keyboard. Uh, I was a console gamer when I was younger. Like I played all the Final Fantasy games up to X2 and um, Buddy Abel 1, I played on uh, PlayStation, Fantasy Star Online and oh, those type of games. Like, uh, absolutely fantastic one and two and then the third with card game mm, fucking fantastic mm -hmm. uh and then uh well then diablo 2 came around right and, yeah you know there, there was suddenly no point i played a lot of halo one and two of course as well oh, and right. then when halo 3 came out uh, we saw everybody bought the xbox 360 we had our land parties and we realized how bad halo 3 was compared to halo 1 and 2 everybody well most of us sold our xbox 360 a few months later and then it was just a computer for most of us. None, none of my friends and myself, we went back to the console after that. It was just PC and you know, all from there on out. So nice. the Halo 3 did that to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Um, Speaking and of... now there is, it's uh, mobile gaming. <laughs> That's not real gaming. I gatekeep that. I hate it. Do you know, I only care because it's actively making my version of gaming worse. That's what I don't like about it. What, you don't like Bow Passes, Gamba and everything, loot boxes, skin microtransactions? Yeah, you don't like those things, Is It's not making your games better, you sure? No. No, I'm, I'm, I'll pass. Okay. No, I don't know. Honestly, I, like, personally, I'm, like, especially sad about, like, the, the peasant launch. Thing that's been happening lately where you can play three days early or yeah pay to play three days early that uh, i'm like devastated by that personally wasn't that like wasn't that like introduced uh, i might be wrong correct me if i'm wrong here but i was under the impression that, that was brought into the west world from lost ark wasn't it at a big scale lost ark was i feel like lost ark was one of the first extremely notable versions i don't think they were technically the first one i can tell you what the first one was but i don't think they were the first one but they were one of the most yeah. notable ones uh, at least on steam as well when it comes to the mmo like pc side of things the reason it bums me out though is that once they all once it started they're all going to do it and then it also staggers the launch which i know is like good for servers but the problem is is i want the hype experience of like oh my god there's so many people here i can't even get my quest done you know exactly. the town is so massive fight. everyone's trying to figure out where the spots are like it's it i don't like this 
the super three-day advanced thing. Even the early access I got for Diablo 4 is like, God bless it because it helped my channel. But look, I would have rather none of us had the early access and everyone starts on the same day. You know what I mean? That would have been yeah. the better way yeah. as well to do it. It's, so it's a little bit of an arms race type situation, mm -hmm. but it's... 100%. Like, I, I never blame content creators for turning it down because it is a big revenue source. But yeah, I also wish yeah. that there was... And yeah. I, I have turned it down personally a few times. Uh, but... What I don't like about it is like, I love that feeling of like a new game being explored. So I hate it whenever yeah. a game like is launched and instantly when the NDA is lifted, it was like, here's the entire game solved. And I'm like, man. Yep. Yeah. Like, ah, uh, yeah. It's a bummer because they offer it to you, you're going to do it because everyone else is going to do yeah. it and you're screwed if you don't, if you're trying to make content and it's a kind of a bummer, but I would yeah. highly prefer not to have it that way because it'd be much more exciting plus i'm learning like it's much more fun just to play games blind like just for go into it i don't know what to expect mm -hmm. i don't know what's around the corner and it makes for more entertaining of the live streams too so yeah i, I, mean, I do like the like you mentioned the big hype everyone's playing the only thing that goes through my mind like i was a wild player for many many years i remember the the original release but also the classic yeah release i did for TBC, everyone's standing outside the dark gate and server goes in, you log in and there's like thousands of people. Like your, your computer, you can start finding an egg on your GPU. It's all good, man. We're just gonna get into the portal. And that that feeling is yeah. the same feeling I get when you play like PoE launches. You go in, everyone's spamming in the global channels. You see people reaching new hires level. You see people dying, all those things. It's just, it, it's such a beautiful feeling to be Everybody. part of that mass group, right? And that gets diminished with these early access approaches, right? Yeah. I guess that's kind of why leagues yeah. are fun. Oh. Part of the reason anyways, because you almost get that same sort of experience and you know, yeah, people don't really access yeah. the leagues or anything. And another sure. thing about the Diablo 4 one that I thought was extra worse was like, you could pay to start on Friday or you could start normally on Wednesday. But so many people have jobs where they literally can't play until Friday. So if you couldn't pay to play at launch, you start a week late. Yep. I feel like it's just a way to charge more for a product now because you all know that everyone wants to play day one. Like that's what it is. No one wants to play day five or whatever. So everyone's going to pay the extra 20 bucks, whether or not they think it's worth it or not. They're going to pay the 20 bucks because they don't want to be left behind. And so it's just, okay, we're releasing $60 games, but really we're releasing $80 games. It's not three day early access. It's three day late access as a penalty if you yeah. don't pay it. Yeah. yeah. Another Absolutely. thing I was thinking about with Blizzard and the release is that I was very surprised that they orig originally decided to do it in the first place, but it was actually beneficial for European players and they're based in the States and their largest oh, player wow. base is in the States, right? They really decided to have launches on Tuesdays, like with the wipes, the very same day they have raid resets and relaunches on content in WoW and other games. They're just completely uh -huh. building up this metaverse and then they're alienating their own player base inside of it. It's like, it makes no sense. What happened yeah, with a Friday launch? Oh, they don't want to have people working, you know, with the, with work in the weekend because it costs them more money, I guess. I, I don't know, but like every time there's a raid release and then there's a Diablo 4 release at the same freaking time, it's like, I, I can't play both. I have to yeah, that's very frustrating. Oh man. Uh, it is, just, it is. I just don't understand I, the whole point of it. It must be in their best interest not to do that. I mean, someone must if, have said something. If D four is expansion has the early access thing, I, I, I mean, it's a shitty decision for a content creator, but I'll be very tempted to boycott it. But obviously, it is like a pretty big financial loss, which sucks. So I won't have a choice. Yeah. So I have my guides to take care of. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I actually talked about this specifically for Diablo 4 since I had access before the game launched um, mm -hmm. via IC veins to have my guides there. And um, it was the same thing there. Like I, I told everyone that was talking about buying it, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm a content creator and I'm responsible for certain things, and I signed a contract to actually have my guides up in high quality. If I was a gamer, I would not do it because there's I wouldn't be racing. I wouldn't yeah. pay for that extra access. I'm only doing it because I can write it off as a business expense and that I'm actually making money for doing it. That's the only reason mm. I'm doing it. I'll make you a deal. But, but then, you know, I'm contributing, right? 
I'll go with you on that. Or- if if the expansion has the three day early access, I know it's DM Diablo Four, but if they have the three day early access, I will not do it either. I will. Well, we'll, 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 I'll I'll do it with you. I wonder if we get enough content creators to do that, that it makes a difference. Because like that is something I kind of wish as a gaming community. Because we, I feel like gaming came really together on NFTs, and we got rid of NFTs. So you don't see NFTs in gaming pretty much. Um, I really wish we'd do that for the stupid like paid access. Like I've been the the only exception I made is uh, the actual launch of D four because yeah, it is a, a big financial decision. But every other early access, I've actually been like refusing to buy, well, even on games I did. I'm just thinking, I'll put my money where my mouth is on this one. Cause like, honestly, I'm, the more I think about it, the more it does, like it kind of bums me out from a gamer perspective. Like I, it will be a huge financial bad decision, but like it does actually kind of bum me out. Cause what I like more than anything in the games is we all play on the same day and that like that feeling, and we're actually losing that in games. Like we're just straight up yeah. losing it inch by inch. So, you know, it's say you're out there saying it, it's like, I mean, D4 is my main bag, but like, okay. Because I actually, I, I kind of miss, I kind of miss that shit too, to be honest with you. I love that. Yeah, I mean, we'll hopefully get an announcement in not too long about what they're going to do. We'll figure I mean, it, it out. Would be, it, it's basically creating a sadly very lucrative product out of thin air that doesn't yeah. cost them shit to make. So there's no point for them not to make it. So we're, we can safely assume that they will. Like my personal only problem is because I I have a contract I have to I can't violate my contract yeah. I'm gonna right, have to, right. I have yeah, no yeah. choice, um, yeah. but that's for that game specifically. But yes, I I definitely agree that similar to what happened with NFTs, um, that can die out if enough, especially like the bigger names, but it, the quantity is what matters, is actually on board with it. Like that's that's the I mean, solution. You you would need to like I don't know maybe you'd need to literally get a petition because you don't need just streamers to do it too. You need yeah players yeah, viewers because the majority are still doing it. They're just not going to care. Yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, this needs to be petitioned and and then marketed and hyped and like promoted a long time prior so people are ready for it. Yeah, that's that's kind of what would need to happen. I mean, you remember being spammed with your emails with NFT offers. True. <laughs> yeah. That's almost gone. Almost yeah. entirely yeah. gone. Now time. it's like once or twice happens. I think I got two last year in total three, uh-huh. actually, for the entire year. But wow. the year before that. I was getting one or two a week at some point. Yeah. Some being like two, three hundred thousand dollars to say, hey, you want to support our NFTs? <laughs> I uh oh, no, I'm good. I'm good, man. Thanks. <laughs> when NFTs were super popular and all the crypto bros were spamming it. And I made a video called, like, why I hate NFTs and will not support them or whatever. And I remember getting flamed in the comments of this video. Like, well, you're just an idiot. You can't see the future. Like, it's really good for the consumer. Imagine that you can take your minerals you mined in the space game and then transfer them to the medieval game and make a weapon. It's like, what makes you think the companies are going to let you do that? Like, have you thought about it? Like, do you think that this company is going to let you take your items out of their economy and move it to their competitor's economy when the next game comes out? Like, okay, let's say the NFTs did work on technology standpoint. Suddenly, just you think the billion-dollar companies are just going to be cool with that and just let you run from one to one? No, they're not consumer-friendly. It ain't going to work. Someone else is making the bag off you. But, you know, of course, you can't say that without getting flamed. Yeah. No, I mean, it's that too, but it's just like bad on like so many levels. And especially for me, who like my favorite time of a game is a fresh wipe anyway. So I don't want to start over on a new game with new stuff anyway. I do want that fresh feeling. Yeah, imagine yeah, 50 so. years of farming materials in EVE Online and then the next space game comes out. And guess what? That entire economy is being dumped in, all the bots included. <laughs> it's like, <Exactly>. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm That's looking for it. We have a looks like we got a couple good months of gaming coming ahead of us. We got the Zizrin's Gauntlet oh, yeah. on the second. We got 21st, we have Last Epoch. And then hopefully in March, like you're saying, we'll have the Path of Exile next season. So it's going to be a it's gonna be a pretty good couple months of gaming coming up. Very ahead. exciting. You guys got any uh, last talking points? To, uh... or? Uh, just want to briefly mention that the preliminary date for PE2 beta is in June, right? Is it really? That's announced? true. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a preliminary date. They said that they're aiming for the Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So not long after, we're going to see that as well. So, I mean, it's... I Exciting mean, last year, year was... Yeah, last year was launch after launch after launch every month, pretty much after the... During some summer and forward, that's how it felt. And that's not slowing down. It just keeps going now in the ARPG scene and plus other games with Pal, Shro Pal World and Shrouded, etc. So it's, uh, it's... Being a gamer right now, it's good for us. All right? Might not be great games all the time, but... <laughs> There has been some good. good ones, though. I mean, like I've said, yeah. we've been getting banger releases. We have the obvious ones you just mentioned, but then, like, last year was insane. And I could go down the list and list them all. But, like, games like Remnant 2, which are like, okay, they're not Baldur's Gate 3 level of success, but they're, like, good games at a good price that are absorbable. It's like, okay, we're back into, like, these Super Nintendo level games where you buy a game, you complete the game, you feel satisfied with your purchase. It doesn't have to be your forever game. You don't have to make it your next yeah. life. You just play a game that's good and then you move on to the next one. Like, that, I'm kind of hoping we, you know, keep pumping those level of games out. You know what I mean? 100%. I mean, Baldur's Gate 3 was so insane. Just absolutely blown away by how good that was. Agreed. Though I have to complete it. So, I still haven't... I know, I know. It's like it's like saying I've got halfway through Elden Ring, which I have. You know, it's like I have these well, games that are actually goaded. See, I mean, I don't know. For me, Elden Ring wasn't really worth finishing in the same way. Well, it's because... Yeah, the main thing I cared about in Elden Ring was uh, beating Melania. And then I asked Steel, I was like, is there anything harder than that? And he was like, no. And I was like, oh, okay. But I had a great time at Elden Ring still. So. You know, I have never really found myself in love with the Elden Ring kind of games. I had, I've seen yeah. them. They look fantastic. I love the idea with the combat. Just never got myself into playing them because it wasn't attractive for me enough. But they look fantastic and everyone keeps telling me how amazing they are. I, I don't know. Very just never spent the took the effort to actually make time for it. Yeah. None of them even. I feel no. like Elden Ring is the closest thing to Path of Exile where it's like it's a really good game but you have to play it enough to get why it's a really good game. Like the you start it and you're like this is a somewhat clunky fighter game that seems unfair. And then you play it for a while longer and it's like okay, I kind of start to get it like it's pattern recognition testing over and over and over again, you know what I mean? It feels a lot like the Maven fight. To be honest, so only like yeah. every time you do a different fight, kind of feels like a maiden fight all over again. Yeah, I but, think so. But as is, I know it's late for you, man. So let's uh, I, let's let you go to bed. I appreciate you coming on the podcast and uh, hanging around for the last hour or so. You got anything you want to shout out other than you got the gauntlet on the second at the end here? Yes, the gauntlet. That's pretty much it. That's all we care about right now. Gauntlet, 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 baby. February second. Join this is Gauntlet. I'll be live streaming it. I'm sure Gazi will be live streaming it. Pretty much going to wrap it here, boys. Thanks for coming by, everyone. Gazi, last statements, anything? Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this live on stream, you know what the Prime sub is. Just, you know, come on. We're three people here. You know what to do. That's it. Catch you guys in the next one. There Till it is. Then. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us, sis. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, Cheers. no problem. Thanks so much. Had a blast.